Okay, so can teledermatology really replace face-to-face -face consultations? And I will argue that yes. These are my conflict of interests. So let's stop for a second and ask ourselves, why is this question important? Why is it important to decide if teledermatology can replace face-to-face -face consultations? There are many reasons for that. And I believe one of the main reasons is the future. We feel that this future is coming. It's already starting. AI algorithms are performing teledermatology. And, and for that to happen, we have to be absolutely sure that human tele teledermatology can replace face-to-face -face consultations before we have this transformation for AI performing these consultations. Now, it won't happen at once. It's not that one day we will wake up in the morning with robots and algorithms uh, treating us and performing teledermatology. It will happen in stages, slowly, slowly. And, you know, AI, it AI performing teledermatology neutralizes many of the problems we have in human teledermatology. You know, we, we can um, classify teledermatology to two basic forms. There's a synchronous and asynchronous teledermatology. They both solve the accessibility issues, but the availability issues are solved only with the asynchronous teledermatology because you still have to, if you want to perform a synchronous teledermatology session, you still have to schedule an appointment with a dermatologist. If you want to receive a comprehensive patient history, of course, the synchronous teledermatology is more fit. But imagine AI performing teledermatology in the future, this teledermatology will be only synchronous and it resolves all of these issues. So can teledermatology really replace face-to-face -face consultations? And the way I understand it, when we say replacing face-to-face -face consultations, it means that when you're looking at a specific, specific medical issue, which is treated with teledermatology, there's no need for a further face-to-face -face consultation. So we'll start with definitions. What is teledermatology? Teledermatology is using telecommunications for a dermatological consultation. And what is telecommunication? It's any of these forms of transmitting information over a long distance using electromagnetic pulses so, or waves. So it includes also a telephone and a mobile phone and SMS and the internet. And um, even if, for the example, if the patient calls you and you speak to him on the phone for renewing a prescription, this is also teledermatology. And we may ask ourselves in the future if hologram teledermatology replaces face-to-face -face consultation. This, of course, this technology does not exist today. So, um, one would argue that there are setups that are more fit for teledermatology in the meaning that it replaces face-to-face -face consultations. One may argue that there are setups that are, have a higher potential of doing that than others. For example, this setup where you have the primary care physician where the patient is consulting the primary care physician in any way and the primary care physician he's the one who's performing the teledermatology a session with the teledermatologist this may have an advantage and opposed to the other setup where you have the patient directly consulting with no mediators with a teledermatologist sending him images and metadata and this is true, there may be cases which may be more suitable for one setup than the other. Another way of looking at these setups, there are, I, you can look at it as one setup called a private setup where you have one dermatologist for, that for treating his patients, he has a teledermatology uh, uh, platform set up and he knows the patients, he knows their medical history and that's one of the ways he treats his patient. That opposed to a public setup where you have many patients sending their consultations to many dermatologists. You find that in inpatient clinics, outpatient clinics, and HMO, HMOs. The patient not always knows who's the dermatologist who will take care of their consultations, and the, 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 the dermatologist not always knows the patient <clears throat> and before the consultation. So that one would argue that only one of these setups has the potential of replacing face-to-face -face consultations. And there may be cases that really one setup would be better than the other. Now, for us to say that face-to-face -face consultations can be replaced by teledermatology, it really depends who you ask. Now, these are the players in the medical system. And for it to re really replace 
face-to-face -face consultations, you need agreement between all these players that it really can replace face-to-face -face consultation because it's enough that one of them does not agree, it would not happen. So if you ask the patient, so patients love teledermatology. They really love it and, um, and they're using it more and more. But one can argue and say that it's not fit for everyone. There may be patients that it would be harder for them. So this is uh, analyzing our data from, from Maccabi, where I manage their, their teledermatology system. And we see that between the age groups of 25 to 45, they like it the most. This is um, an asynchronous uh, teledermatology platform. It's females more than males, but when you increase in age, so they, they use it less, and it's males using it more than, than females. So one would argue and say that it's meant more, more for young, for a younger population, but you can always find a solution for the older population also. It depends on the setup. Maybe for them, a setup where it's through a primary care physician would be most, more suitable. When you ask uh, the patient about the experience, so there is, I mean, you would think that the experience in a face-to-face -face consultation is, is a better experience for the patient, but there is work uh, published showing that when you ask the patients regarding the confidence and the professional skills of the dermatologist, how the institution is organized, access and timeliness, cost effectiveness, convenience, the patients score much higher the teledermatology. They would prefer teledermatology and face-to-face -face consultation. When it comes to satisfaction, so there are surveys showing that they, maybe the satisfaction is higher in the face-to-face -face consultation, but generally the patients love it and they would replace it, would replace the face-to-face -face consultations with teledermatology. And what about regarding communication with the doctor? You would think that because there's no personal touch, they would prefer the face-to-face -face consultations, but actually studies are showing that when it comes to the um, perception of the kindness and respect they're getting from the dermatologist and the whole management of the consultation, teledermatology is scoring higher. There, one may argue that there is an issue of privacy, that there may be cases why because of privacy issues they would prefer a face-to-face -face consultation. Well, that may be true, but, no, but generally the patients love it and they would replace the face-to-face -face consultations with teledermatology. And, and it gets to absurd, and, and the patients love it so much that they, don't, they keep on consulting, even when it's obvious for, I'm, I'm sure that some of you had these patients before, you consulted them again and again, and you weren't able to solve this problem, and you told the patients, oh, you have, I want to see you. You have to see a, a doctor face to face, but, but they, re, they refuse. They keep on sending another consultation. If you want answer, they'll send it to someone else. And they don't have time. They don't have time to go to the doctor. And it really gets to absurd, what leads us to say sometimes, you know, if you tried it all but found no grace, you should see a doctor face to face. What about us, the doctors? So many of us love teledermatology, and actually it's already starting to replace the face-to-face -face consultations. There are physicians, we see that, that are even shifting their face-to-face -face clinics to teledermatology clinics. Uh, we love it so much, it saves us money. Uh, we uh, manage our time more efficiently. But that's one thing, can it replace face-to-face -face consultation? So one would argue that it depends on the indications. And that's and actually, it's true. When we can perform biopsies uh, in teledermatology, there's work showing that patch test performing and, and, and analyzing is not, we're not there yet in teledermatology, but when it comes to prescription renewals, of course we can, uh, it can replace face-to-face -face consultations. There is work published on initial skin uh, consultations, follow-up on chronic diseases, especially psoriasis, there are a few publications on that, treating acne, treating hair loss, um, forms of eczema, and even skin cancer trials, if you, if you have the proper setup, um, it can uh, really replace face-to-face -face consultations. There is work published on that. And I think it's important that we, uh, consider, we continue, publish, and investigate uh, work on more diagnosis to increase the number of uh, diagnoses when we compare the performance of teledermatology to face-to-face -face consultations because it's important to define the boundaries of uh, teledermatology. One would argue that it depends on the teledermatologist himself. They would say that a physician can't sit all day and write consultations uh, in teledermatology. You need the personal touch. And that also may be true. So we, we checked that in our data on Maccabi. We asked ourselves when a doctor decides that now he's going to sit and he's going to write teledermatology consultations. How many consultations can he write in a row before he says, that's it, I'm not, I, I can't do it anymore? 
So there are some physicians who can write three or four to five consultations. That's enough for them. Most of them, it's between 12 and 13 before they, they say that's it. But there are doctors who could just continue 20, 30, 40, 50, even 100 consultations. They could just keep on going. Uh, they're built for it. So there definitely are dermatologists who can do a very good job a long time. We'll go on to the medical organization. Does the medical organization think that teledermatology can, fa can, uh, can become of, uh, instead of face-to-face -face consultations? So what the medical organization, what's important for him, basically are these three parameters. Are the patients satisfied? Are the consultations with high quality? And is it cost effective? So there is work published on patient satisfaction. We also had a survey, a few surveys in, in Maccabi in Israel, and we found that about 70% of the patients are very satisfied with the teledermatology consultation they got. Regarding the quality of the uh, consultations, so like I said in the, in the first slide, we would, we would measure that, and what percent of the teledermatology consultations had to be followed by a face-to-face -face consultation? And we checked that in the data of Maccabi, and we found, this is an, an asynchronous uh, platform, that in the first two weeks after the teledermatology consultations, about 11% of the patients had a face-to-face -face consultation. And when you check over five months, 30% of them had a face-to-face -face consultation. But look at the 70%. 70% 70 of the, of the patients did not require a further face-to-face -face consultation. And this is, I think it's a huge number, a very high number. Regarding cost-effectiveness, well, we, we can talk about that you know, the whole day. It's not easy to calculate. Of course, for rural areas, it is cost-effective when you have uh, cases where are severe accessibility and availability issues. Of course, it's cost-effective. But there is a hard problem of reimbursement issues. Uh, you have competing medical organizations who have this service and you want to have it also. You have to have the platform maintenance. There are legal issues, but the organizations are finding the way. They're finding the solutions. They're finding the way for reimbursements, and it's getting more and more popular, and it is already replacing face-to-face -face consultations. So my answer to this question, can teledermatology replace face-to-face -face consultations? So I would say that in the right setup, the right teledermatologist, the right patient, for the right indication, and the right medical organization, absolutely yes. Thank you.